Hey, good morning. Today's Friday and I have some more fun designs for you today for our Free Motion Friday segment. This is Kate Quinn and welcome. If you haven't seen any of our videos before, Fridays are all about trying to maximize your free motion ability. And today we'll start with something I consider to be a little bit more of the basic design. Then we'll add something more complex and then we have the last one that's just a little bit fancy so if you're interested welcome I will let you know sadly my computer is in the shop so I will have a difficult time seeing comments so if I'm not responding to you effectively that is because my computer is in the shop and I'm having to look at the phone and half of the screen is covered so <laughs> I won't be able to see very well but anyway, our sewing is still going to happen. It's going to be awesome. Let's play. So right now, I used my rope template, and I'll show you real quick what that means. This is the, I don't know what W, a Westerly Continuous Rope, and then the number. Two and a half is how tall the design is, this direction from the top to the bottom. So. For comparison, this white chalk line right here and on the bottom, right there, that's a three inch swath that was made with my three inch ruler. And then I marked the center line in order to keep the rope centered. If you don't have a rope template, you can still do this design. Um, you can do your rope freehand. I really like my rope to be much more regular, so I want to use some help. But they have amazing rope stencils that you can chalk. You can make your own rope stencil. As we've shown before, you can make your own stencils um, pretty easily. So that's another option for you. So I did use this particular one. This is the two and a half C Westerly Continuous Rope Template. And I went ahead and I did a couple different rows because we're going to add some different options, different designs um, as we go. So let's see where we're at. I think we're doing it this way. It doesn't matter. I just, I kind of like to start in the corner, right, to make my designs. And these designs are actually flipped. So like if I was doing it, I would really want to be doing it like that. For myself, I like to start in the bottom. I don't know why that is, but everybody's got their own little thing. So we'll go ahead and uh, do it that way. I'll be kind of doing it, I think, upside down. I'll be starting at the top instead of at the bottom. And maybe on a second one, we'll just flip it over just so you can see. So the first one is very basic. Let's go ahead and we'll do it with some chalk. And I'll show you the sample as well so you can see where we're going. The very first rope is going to look something like this. Okay. Just really simple. We're just putting some fills in it. We're starting at one corner. And we're sort of following the line a little bit and coming back. This space right here is about the same space as my ruler foot approximately. I'm not worried if it's perfect. It's just vague, right? And then you touch and you're going to swing back. And notice that I'm trying to create a little bit of a, a more of a curve. I'm coming out just slightly. I'm not keeping it flat because you can see this one dips out. And then here I want to swing out and then into there and grade to the top and then one more. This brings me to the bottom, right? We started over here and now I just travel to the corner and then I'll be ready for the next one. All right, let's go. If I have half of a rope, I can still do it with half of a rope. But I think I'll start just on the full rope because I think visually that's better training so you can see the process and then you can do the partial rope later. There is my bobbin. All right, we got him. He likes to play hide and seek always at the beginning of this segment. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let's see, I think I'll turn it this way and I think I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit so you get a little bit better angle on it. Oh, I know that that is the this orange fabric. That is the so steady it has a lot of this particular fabric that they sell. All right, so you can pick the top or the bottom. I like to go over the top. 
So that's how we're going to do it. From there, I'm just going to try to use my foot and kind of come away a little bit and curve back in. And I'm going to swing out and use my foot as a guide and grade it back into that center piece. And I want to do that probably at least maybe one or two more times. You can decide how many based on how much space that you have. Okay, so let me show you where we're at. I think this is a good fill. When I looked at that distance and I judged it, I didn't think I could put another one in. If you really wanted to, you could, but we're not trying to crowd it. We're just trying to fill it. So we started here at the top. If I want this to be the same, I would have to travel to come up to the top. So I always say that's good practice. Do it. Don't try to avoid stitching over things when you're free motioning. If you need to do that to get to a new place, I think that's super good practice. It helps us to travel and we only get better on this over stitching if we actually do it. If you avoid it, you're never going to get good at it, right? Okay, so again, with our foot, we're just going to kind of vaguely scoot out and wing it a little bit to the corner. So look ahead. As you're traveling in towards the corner, don't look where your needle is, look where you're going. Okay, now I'm going backwards, so I'm gonna just try to use the foot as my helper right there to get me back over there. Okay. All right, so far so good. And then let's travel again. Look out in front of you. So if the needle is here, I'm looking along this line and I'm trying to move in a straight line. Like right there would be kind of easy because you're just going like that, but it's okay. Keep it canted and just look ahead so that you can see where you're going on the outside. Don't look right there. Here we go again. Okay. So from that corner, we're just going to wing out just a little bit. And the key here is just try to make it smooth. Don't worry about if it's perfect. Just try to make the curve as smooth as you can. That is more important than it being perfect. If the curve is smooth, nobody's gonna notice a problem. It's if your curve has some kind of flatness, that's when they're gonna be like, oh, what happened? So this design is vaguely inspired by my friend Betty, who sent me this really cool design from a Kleenex box. <laughs> So you guys have probably seen that we're doing a lot of different design awareness. Um, my goal is to find a hundred different designs in the world around me in my everyday life and share how those inspire me to quilt something. And it could be pictures in nature, different art, metal work, lots of different things have that. Even just simple patterns in the clouds have been awesome. So right now, let's just do the last one and then we'll just finish that up and you can kind of see. If this one is cut off, I'm gonna try to pretend that I know where my corner is, right? In my mind, I know it's out here. So as I grade, I don't wanna grade to right there, I wanna grade past that, right? And then move and then back to the corner and back. So none of these right here will actually touch a corner because the corner is out beyond that. So we just are using sort of a visual estimation at that point in order to get that to the place. Okay, and then we'll travel right down. So it did look like I might be having some connection issues. Hopefully we'll still be able to go. Oh, that one went a little wonky, huh? Went a little bit more curvy, but it'll be okay. So we'll tack it off and let's cut it and we'll show you the whole thing. So I always like to use that method to pull up my bobbin thread. Here is the bobbin thread right here. I can cut it all the way off because I have already stitched over it with my micro tacking stitches. So it's not gonna come out and that way I have my piece all the way disconnected right down there and then there's no thread left over. This is what you're going to get if I use the scissor button. You'll get these little two uh, little birdie tails right there. You're going to get two like that. And then if you pull it up like we did right now, 
and you can cut it from the bottom most of the time you'll get a nice clean cut like that I think I have a little little fuzzy right there but most of the time if you pull those bobbin threads tight all the way up to the top and snip them you'll get a nice clean look without anything that you have to come back and take care of all right so our next one is going to be kind of a feather style and what I might do is I might do some a little bit of variations and we'll change the feather just slightly um, to make you know just some different variations but basically feather for this one again we're going to pretend that this one on the corner is full because we don't have the corner to start so I want to do a swirl to start my feather and I'm going to hook back over to the top. So go all the way around and travel and then we'll do another swirl and a hook back around. And on this one we are traveling on the feather so you're going to have a lot more over stitching. We'll do a different one where you're not going to travel as much. But I like this particular one because it lets me estimate how big of a swirl I want for the next segment, right? So when I come all the way back to the beginning, right here, I can say, okay, swirl is gonna fit. I can probably fit two more right in that space. And that way this can arc out more effectively to fill that space. Come back around and all the way down. And then this one will curve right in to fill that space. Okay, again, if I want to start at the same spot, then I have to travel back to that start point. Okay, so here we're going to do a little bit of a variation of this one, a little bit different, but still feathers. This whole one will do feathers. So this one we're going to do curly cue and travel back out. And then this one will be more of a feather style. Okay, and then we're going to do a pattern. So we'll do curly cue. Coming back to this top. And this one's going to arc over. And we want to kind of angle this back so we have sort of this V. Right there, it's not as good. When this one came back, it's not as much of the V like this one. You can see we'll move up a little bit and this one will be a little flatter. So I'll just want to watch for that as I'm going. So as I come out here, there's my V. I want to kind of create that V right there. So there's my curly Q. Follow it back around. And then there's my feather. And I'm right in the position here where I can travel right back up to the top. Okay. All right. Oh, I even like that one. That one fills really nicely. So you have a little bit of different levels of control, I think, between these. Whichever one you think is best for you. So let's do a little bit of a variation on this one. So this one will do sort of a teardrop right there. And then this one will come over the top. Curving that back in. As I got to this feather spine right here, I was continuously pulling that down a little bit to get this V and to make this a little bit less rectangle right there. So then come up a little bit. I think we've got maybe two or three, depending on how big we make these next ones. Dip down to get the curvature, maybe one. I think it's too tight to try to put more in there. Okay, and then the last one we'll do, we'll mix it up. Instead of it just being so strictly feathers, um, let's go ahead and put variations in there. So we'll have a little tiny swirly, and we'll make them really tight. Okay, and then this one we're going to do a leaf, push up, and come back. And we'll do a little tiny swirly right there. And then this one can branch out of that. A 
I'm filling in that space right there with my little swirly, nice and tight. And that one, and then finish. Okay. So feathers are great. We can always vary them up. Let's do something maybe a little different. I'm trying to think of how we could make it more leafy. So let's put like a little wiggly one like that. And then we'll wiggle another one. So there you go. That's just a little bit. All you're doing is this is a little S curve, a little dip down and then back in. And these are nice because they don't touch each other. So if you have trouble with that stitching back upon yourself, this one can be a good option for somebody that doesn't want to do that. Each one of these lobes can be themselves, right? And here, if I want to travel, I don't have to go from there. I could travel up a little and then just echo, little s, right? I travel up, echo, a little s, and back. So there's a couple of good ideas for um, ways that you can fill in your rope, make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more flirty, just a couple different ideas. Let's do this last one. It is definitely the most complicated one. So let's talk about it before we do it. My thought is to do something with a little pearl like that. And then whatever we want, we can fill this in down here differently. But basically we want to section off a piece of the rope and put a little pearl in there. So let's focus on this part first and then we'll talk about what to do about this part. Now, I won't lie to you, if I was gonna do this, I want a ruler and I would want a way to try to make those echoes the same. I, would, I could do it free motion, I could, but I want more regularity. Part of that, um, of the design of the rope is that it is very consistent and that's why people like it. It's kind of like a clamshell. It's very classic. So if I was going to do that, I could take this and I could try to put in just sort of this part of it right here like that. And I could use my spacing gauge to do that. So we could even get more than one. We would line this line right here up with the rope. And then when we came down, this part is more straight. This part of it is actually a straight line. So we could use the top of the rope to give us that echo right there. So let's figure out how we need to line it up right there. This right here is in line with this point. So I'll scoot it over just a little bit. And that's trying to give me a consistent measure from the top to the bottom. It might be a little bit uh, different. It looks like it's not perfect. It looks a little bigger here and a little narrower here. And I'm fine with that. I don't care. As long as I have a way that I can consistently measure it, I'm fine with it. All right. So I won't even bother tying that off. Once I get down to this spot, let's see, do we want it even bigger? I think we want it bigger. Okay. Yeah, we do a little bit bigger. All right. So I'm going to just go down to the dip and then when I get to the bottom, right? then this would just be straight, right? You're just going down to the bottom. So just go straight, keep this distance approximately the same. Oh, that didn't look very good. All right, we'll just freehand it, because we can. This is free motion, right? So I want a little bit bigger than my foot. So when I look at it right there, I want to keep my foot a little bit away from the space. So I could just use that as a guide. Okay, and we'll fill that in, come back up to the top. Again, a little bit of space, and just use the foot as the guide. Remember, it's more important to make a smooth curve than a perfect curve, right? We're doing it free motion, we're not a robot, so just try to travel as smoothly as you can. It's the jerky lines that I think look more of a, of a problem than if we just tried to travel as smoothly as we can. Okay, so we're creating our channel. Okay, 
little bit of space right there, always using our visual awareness to try to create what we're wanting. Okay, and then I'm, I'm done. I've got my little channel. That by itself, I think, actually looks very cool. Don't you think? I think it looks awesome. Ha! Okay, so let's go ahead and put our, put our pearls in. Now, when we're doing pearls, we are traveling through the center. And so this is figure eight starting in the center. And we have to think about the size of the pearl ahead of time. Really important with pearls, try to keep a speed that is a little bit faster than you might normally sew and try to be consistent. Try to move at a consistent rate. And I can make them a little bigger, a little smaller. I think I can fit two right here. So I'm planning ahead to fit one in there, even if he's a little squashed. Ooh, love it so far. What do you think? Do you guys like it too? I feel like I'm, I, I can't see your comments. So, <laughs> so it's really hard for me to like respond in real time. Whoa, Sue, what were you thinking? I'm going to scroll back and see what you're thinking because I want to know. Oh, Echo Guides, what a good idea. I didn't even think of that. That's a really smart idea. Good job. Thank you. So see, I'm not the only one who's on here learning something. Everybody, I hope, is learning something fun. <laughs> That's a really good idea, and I should do that. So next time, I'll try to remember that and get those out. Uh, okay, let's see where we're at. You love them all. Oh, I'm so glad. Good. I hope I want to see somebody try some of these. Let's go down to the bottom. Um, if you felt like you were getting a little too much travel right in here, let's take a different path. Let's travel over the top since we've already traveled along that center line a bunch of times. We could go a different way if we want to change how much thread is being laid down. So we can now go this way and then we'll travel on the bottom and then we'll go the opposite way. So here we go. So again, consistent speed, trying to make your circles as round as they can. If you can't make them round, that's okay. Make them a little like coffee beans, you know, or make them irregular. I didn't start out with good circles. I mean, I've practiced them a lot and I've gotten better, but it's okay if they're irregular, as long as they're all irregular, right? Because then you can just say, that's just the pattern, right? So it looks like we're gonna have a little squashy one in here. If that bothers you, just make a half, right? It's okay, nobody cares. Nobody's gonna come back and uh, give you demerits. Right, looking ahead and then travel to the center and now we'll travel this one. So actually this one looks like it's a little bit smaller. So the smaller they have to be, go a little bit faster. I really think that I can make them much rounder if I have a little bit of speed. Also, if your hand position doesn't feel comfortable, I think it gets very hard to move with the little circles. So go ahead and check your hand position, make sure you're comfortable. All right, we're in the center. And now we're back on this top side so we can travel on the top. And get down to the center. And now we'll go this way. So we've just created a pattern of travel for ourselves. And it actually works very well for the design in terms of keeping the thread balanced. So I like that. We're trying to hit right in the middle, right there, as we travel over, like right here. This is where that figure eight is happening, right at the center. So as I'm coming back right here, I'm aiming for that center. Otherwise, you're gonna get a little bit of a weird overlap on your circles, and they won't look like they're circles. They'll look like they're kind of like little ropey things. They won't touch in the right spot. Also, if you have a lighter weight thread, mine thread is a 40 weight, so it's pretty heavy. So I, I can fit two in here. I'm gonna plan ahead. I'm gonna fit another one and it's gonna fill up that space. So I'm at the bottom, travel, trying to stitch right in the existing stitch line. 
and come over to the center. Okay, so I'm trying to see where it looks a little ropey if I miss. Right, so if you miss, it kind of looks a little bit more like this one. Let's come in just a little bit more so you can see that. Right there where he kind of crosses over and, and travels a little bit outside. This is a little bit more ropey than if you get this touch right at the intersection. If you can't follow the circle, I mean, if you can't uh, make a circle and you want to work on that, one of the ways that um, I think is a good practice option is if you get some fabric that has big dots. I think like Tulip Pink used to have a, a fabric that had big dots, big circles. And you could just quilt it and just go around a bunch of times and make a bunch, a bunch of them. So I love this one. So. Let's put some kind of different fill in this one than we've done before. Um, let's do like long, long curvies. It's a little bit more of a contrast and it also can fill up pretty well on a longer path and it also can change directions. Even if we keep the width the same, it can shorten, it can lengthen. I won't lie to you, I struggle with these. An idea if you have trouble keeping them this way is just put some like straight reference lines periodically, kind of go like this. And it's not that you have to be on the line, it's that you're parallel to the line, right? So we can use that as a helper. Um, Going side to side. Again, hand control. If you don't feel like you can move the fabric well, adjust your hand position and you'll feel a lot more comfortable. I think it's very important that your hand is in a good place when you're doing any of these. All right, so we did two of those. That looks kind of busy to me. I'm gonna scoot back out so you guys can see a little bit better. I don't know if that has as much contrast as I want. And um, one of my other designs had the feather in there. So let's go ahead and do the feather in there because I think that would look awesome with this. And then here we'll just curve over to the next one. I like that better. I think there's better contrast here between these two than there was on those first ones. And then let's do something else. Let's do one of those leaves because I liked that. I thought that looked really awesome. So we'll do a little baby leaf. And let's see. We'll make, how about we'll change the spine. Let's make this the spine. Oh, I think I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Oh, it'll be fine, right? We'll make this the spine and then curve back that way. There we go. That looks cool too, I think. And then, I don't know, let's do something else with this one. Let's do something that kind of fan, more like a fan style. If you wanted to echo that, you could. I think we need one more echo on that side. So when I do this one next time, I'll echo on that side. All right, let's pack it off. I'll just cut it because we're kind of done. What do you think for today? Did you have fun? Did you learn something new and different, exciting? 
provocative, as my mother would say. <laughs> Just got a new Janome to use at workshops, a 5270 QDC and waiting for it. Well, it's getting a new machine is always exciting, isn't it? It's awesome. Hope you have a lot of fun. And that's great. It means that you'll be going to workshops with other cool creative people. So that's always fun as well. Um, yes, I, whoever said this, Sue said she wanted a knee lift. I think a knee lift is so helpful. It's really important. I, I think it's funny to me, like, you know, you have students that have never used that and they're like, oh, I can't do that. Well, you know, my first couple machines didn't have that either and I had to learn how to use that. But I would find it very difficult to go back now that I do have a knee lift because I do use that a lot and I would find that a big challenge. So here's, I'm going to just scoot out so you can see kind of all of the designs at once. We'll just scoot out. See if we can make it a more wide angle. And of course, you know, we did what I consider to be sort of the basic use down here. This is a little bit simpler. And, you know, if you wanted to get more complicated, let's see, we have one, two, three, four. If you added one more line, you could do fill, open, fill, open. So I could put, you know, something in here, even just a little undulating line like that, if you wanted more fill. And then this one could be like this, right? Actually, I think it works perfect. If that's, oh yeah, it does. Okay, so we'll, I'll show you the pattern. Um, it would be on the first one, skip. We would undulate here like this, and then skip, and then this one would be filled like this. And then you'd skip this one, fill this one. Even just something wiggly, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't have to be too fancy. It just would change the texture because you would get lift, compression, lift, compression, lift, compression. I think that would look awesome too, don't you? That's just another way that you could add that in. So this would be ha having the three lines would perfectly segment these in order to put just a little fill on every other one. So, and then that one is the feathers one with our different feathers. And you saw that we changed the orientation, like the spine right here is on the bottom, but we could have the spine be the top or we could have this be the spine and the feather could stretch out into the space as well and not even be in the curve. Right, this could be your spine just from there to there. So whatever you choose, that's up to you. All right, and there's the last one. More complicated, right? It's always more complicated on the last one. You guys, thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. I'll go through the messages since I couldn't see the, the chat as well uh, now that I've got my, my, my computer in the shop. It's, it's almost as bad as having a sewing machine in the shop, but not quite. So have a wonderful week. Have a great day. Happy sewing, happy quilting. Give your designs a try. I'd love to see what you're doing. So please feel free. I do respond to as many emails as I can. I have a lot of them every day. So I try to actually answer them. So if you have some good ideas and um, if you see stuff in your area that you want to share on in my, um, does, uh, what is it, daily? DQDI, Daily Quilting Design Inspiration. And it's nicknamed the Cutie. So we could just say the Cutie, right? That's, that's basically what the initials are, are uh, referencing. The Cutie, that's the design of the day. So if you have some cool ones, I'm happy to share those too. And I give credit, I don't, I don't mind. I don't need it to be all about me. It'd be fun if you've got some things in your area that you wanna share. Cause I also think, you know, you guys are from all different places in the world and Different designs kind of have styles that fit different areas um, from the hist history, from historical influences, from religious influences, from um, whatever your geographic configurations are. You know, here we've got mountains, other people have beaches, whatever. So if you have some cool ideas that you want to share, you can send them to me. You can even post them on the page. I share those too. So have a good day and we will see you soon. Okay next week. Um, Sunday I will be on um, and then we'll definitely be um, posting if I'm traveling. I'm traveling later in June, not at the beginning of June, but late in June. So happy quilting. Have fun. Talk to you guys later.